Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. So, full confession. Um, first of all, today is Thursday, March 10th. That's not the confession. But uh, <laughs> I've already been sipping on the coffee. So I sat down here once already to start the podcast staring at my face and the video screen here and I was thinking I look so tired I look so tired and washed out what's you know what's wrong I'm well, I feel a little droopy this morning but wow I look really washed out and then I realized I forgot to put my makeup on I'd like totally skipped putting on makeup somehow so I had to like go back and actually put on the the up how is your day going <laughs> um, I don't know why I'm spacey today. I slept a long time last night and woke up about 20 till 6. Didn't get out of bed until after 6 because I was just so sleepy. I was kind of, you know, when you wake up and you kind of do the dozy thing, kind of dreamy thing, which I really enjoy. But um, yeah, I'm feeling sleepy this morning and then like forgetting to put on the makeup. <laughs> Don't know how that happened. The coffee is definitely perking me up. We have a big winter storm coming in. It's like this is we've had more winter in the last couple of weeks than we have all winter. Um, ah, my back is also kind of stiff. Might have a little bug. That's what I get for doing things like going into movie theaters and being around people. Here we are, like, figuring out the whole being around people thing again without masks. Because New Mexico lifted the mask mandate a couple weeks ago. I don't know if I mentioned that. So, yeah, everybody's running around exchanging germs again of all varieties. Yeah, so, so it goes. Um, I, I don't feel terrible, just... Um, Clearly not all together with it today. So yeah, we're supposed to start getting snow around 5 o'clock tonight. And it's already pretty overcast. I thought we were going to have a kind of a nice day until then. But yeah, the storm's really coming in. And they're saying we're going to get 48, 8, 4 to 8 inches of snow. Which will be lovely. Um, and David is cooking, cooking us vegetables. He's playing with um, the the new uh, food processor that we were gifted. It's um, it, I don't know if I mentioned it's this very fancy Breville food processor, and so like one of the things ha has on it is an adjustable slicing blade. And David's been watching YouTube videos and making all kinds of great things. He made chicken pot pie, so now he's slicing. Um, like cauliflower and broccoli and sweet potatoes, very thin and roasting them so that we have healthy snacks to have around. What a good man, huh? So he's been busy doing that. And it smells good in here. So I don't mind the snow, but I wonder if it's making me a little bit um, hibernatory. Uh, my friend Kelly Robson asked me the other day if I was hibernating. Uh, because I said I'd slept a long time, like over the weekend, and she said, are you hibernating? And I said, well, I don't think so, because it actually feels like spring here. But now I'm having to walk it back, because, yeah, maybe hibernating. So, I did not have a very productive day yesterday, um, writing-wise. Uh, I kind of tapped out early, and I'm it could be just still the ramp up because I've already written twice as much um, so far this week in the first three days this week than I wrote all of last week or the week before. I mean, you could see it's like doubling each because I was editing and so forth. So, you know, like the, I had um 1392 and then 3317 and so far this week I have 6516 
So I suspect I'm in that phase of building up my writing flow again. That's the thing about taking time off. I, I recognize that it's good for me to take that time off and refill the well and all of that kind of thing. But um, <laughs> it sure does break up that flow. I should like look at some of the athletic stuff, some of the exercise physiology stuff. Um, when I was in grad school, I there were a couple of people in our department, one in particular who was very interested in exercise physiology. It was a zoology and physiology department. That was one of the great things about the department was that there were people working on all kinds of different stuff. And so you learned these smatterings of things. So I know a lot about like reintroducing endangered species and um, like managing wildlife populations and you know uh, evolution of kidneys <laughs> and also exercise physiology and this one grad student worked a lot with uh, the Olympic athletes down in Colorado Springs and I learned a lot from that you know this whole you know how do you deliver peak performance at the time that you want to how do you manage the training and I think that there's a lot of metaphors that are adaptable to that um, I think it works in the same way I, I think that the creative flow works very much in the same way as the as the physical stuff It's never clear to me how much of what we do as writers or creators is directly linked into the physical, but there's definitely parallels. So, so I know that I really pushed hard to finish Grey Magic. Um, I broke some of the my own rules and you know like wrote over the weekend and did all of those things and got it done, and. Maybe I didn't take enough time off between because, you know, I'm definitely feeling this week like I had, I thought, okay, I'm coming back this week and I'm coming back strong. And I did come back strong. Monday, I got over 3,000 words. Tuesday, I only got 24, 23, but I still met my um, milestone goal. So I was still on track for the date I wanted to do and I'd had to stop early on Tuesday. And then yesterday, I don't know, yesterday I was distractible. I did not have the focus again and I only got 576. So I'm just kind of wondering, do I need to like take more days off just um, and not do stuff? Or do I need to like, maybe, maybe I just need to start doing little bits, you know, um, like today go for a thousand words. Maybe I'll try that. That's something that I often recommend to people doing something like NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, instead of going immediately for like that 1667 per day that you need to make it for all 30 days of the month, um, start slow and ramp up and then go to more than the 66, 1667. I don't know if anyone's ever taken my advice, so I don't know if that actually works. We need to do a study. We really need to do some um, actual controlled studies. That's the scientist in me. Wouldn't that be fun? Just to see. And, and it's hard to tell because everyone's so individual, you know, like my mantra, find out what your process is and own it. Um, yet I feel like I'm constantly reworking what works for me while well, finding out what my process is and so forth. So, um, but clearly I'm not back to my 3000 words per day schedule and I'm kind of revisiting and I'm sorry if I do blather on about this a lot because I think I do talk about it. You know, how often do I really sustain 3000 words a day? Well, the quail are here. A bunch of them out there. Blue scaled quail is what we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's the lookout quail. There's always one that's 
gets up on something high and plays lookout. We just bought a coil block, but we haven't put it out there yet. David picked that up yesterday. It's like a block of compressed seed that we put out on the ground for them. So we need to get that out there for them. So anyway, um, I'm wondering how often do I really do, I've been talking about that a lot this year. How often do I really do 3000 words a day? And maybe I need to revisit that. That maybe I thought that that was a sustainable productivity for me, 3000 words a day, five days a week. But I'm, I think I'm actually not sustaining that level very well. And maybe I need to ratchet it down, which, um, Nobody wants to decrease their productivity, but if my productivity decreases itself, then I'm in the same place, right? So, um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Um, it, it's hard to tell like how much is refractory period and how much is just needing to build up endurance again. Um, I kind of like this idea of doing maybe just sort of reframing my goals. I think I'll try that and report back, um, see what you guys think. Because one thing that happens, like a lot of people can do the 50,000 words in, in November for like NaNoWriMo, uh, but then they crash. And, and that's what I'm looking to avoid is, is the crash. I want that sustainability. No, so, so let's see what else is going on. Oh, I should back up a little bit and say that I'm also groping a little bit, trying to find the threads um, for this fourth book of the series. And that's another thing too, is that writing the final book of an arc is just always harder. Um, you're just pulling all the threads together instead of spinning the threads out, you're bringing them together. And I've heard somebody else's, um, you know, use the metaphor of landing the plane, you know, that like taking off is a lot of work, but then you're flying, flying, flying. And that's like relatively low, uh, investment of effort Sa says we who do not fly airplanes. So we don't really know, but landing the airplane, there's a lot involved in landing, landing the airplane and getting everybody safely there. And, you know, like, George R. R. Martin very famously has not finished his series of um, A Song of Ice and Fire. And I don't know if he will. Every once in a while somebody asks me, well, I've talked about this before. When I, when I see George uh, at events here in town, no, I do not ask him about it. Nobody does because we're his friends and we don't want to torment him. Um, but when people ask me if I think he'll finish, I have to say it. I don't know. I mean, I, I do not know if he will. I think there are a lot of things in the way. I think that there are reasons why, for instance, um, Brandon Sanderson very famously recently put up a Kickstarter because he wrote like four novels during pandemic and put up this video about it, which I'm, I have complained in other places, um, given my thoughts on on how he chose to do that. And I will not say it here, uh, but I did have problems with it. You know what? I'm, I am going to say something because he went at it in this, I think, well-intentioned way um, where he was kind of playing a joke and he was saying, you know, um, you know, pandemic's been hard and people have been asking him how he's been doing and that he's been very close mouthed about it and that he finally wanted to come clean. And he pulls out this big stack of paper and says, I wrote four novels uh, <laughs> since pandemic started. And he does give some interesting data where he shows like what percentage of his time was devoted to various activities before the pandemic and how much since. And like, well, for me, it was certainly true. I've talked about it here that without traveling to conferences, without doing all of that stuff, I did not get tired from traveling and I had a lot more 
concentrated time just being here at home and focusing on writing and it did make a difference and and it did for him too. He ended up spending more time with family and you know a minuscule bit on conferences and stuff and he was able to write these novels and fantastic great for him and he is so popular that from this you know he said he was doing a kickstarter to publish these four novels this entirely new series i didn't watch the entire video because i did get irritated with him and i'll tell you why in a moment but you know he's made something like 15 million dollars from this <laughs> kickstarter uh, to publish these novels uh, he hasn't made it yet that's in pledges so you know with kickstarter uh, you only get the money once you deliver the product so but i mean he'll probably deliver and i wanted to add the caveat that brandon sanderson this is how i got there in the first place um, got his start because he finished robert jordan's fantasy series wheel of time so robert jordan had started the series i don't remember how many books in he was he was getting old um, i don't remember if he had a chronic disease or whatever but at any rate Robert Jordan picked Brandon Sanderson to co-author. I don't, I, I'm talking about something I don't know tons about. I don't know how it worked. I don't know if Jordan had it outlined and Brandon wrote it or whatever. But anyway, that's, oh, oh Grish, <laughs> bird hit the window. <laughs> oh, startled me. The cleaning ladies are so good about cleaning the windows, but now the, the birds are hitting them. It, it's always this kind of light this time of year. They get so, um, the birds are so restless, you know, and excitable. Huh, sorry about that. Hope it's okay. Sorry, I have to check. Well, it was alive, but it's really stunned. So I wrapped it in a towel to keep it warm while it recovers and put it up out of the way so a predator won't get it. We'll see if it makes it. I need to get some of those window decals. I put it on my list to buy some. I set it up on the bench outside the window here to see if it was going to be okay. Why not? I think it's a juvie too. <sighs> the cycle of life, as my mother says, the cycle of life is killing me. Okay, so, sorry, focus. Um, so yeah, that happens where people, um, you know, hire someone to finish their series for them. Uh, I kind of wonder if George won't get to that point. Although I kind of don't see George doing that. So anyway, uh, my problem with the way Brandon Sanderson went about that, and I think that it was just not ill-intentioned. I don't think it occurred to him how this would come across. Um, I think it was just, he was excited to share this thing and he thought it was a funny joke to play this way, but it really fell flat for many of us because there are so many creators who have really struggled during the pandemic, have struggled with the anxiety and the difficulty of dealing with all the things. And there are a lot of people who have not been able to create. And so for him to very smugly throw down his stack of paper and be like, I wrote four novels was, um, it was a little much. And so, so yeah, I thought that that displayed a, um, a distressing callousness towards other authors. Um, you know, and that was probably just, oh, Bertie's going to be okay. It's sitting up now. It's sitting, looking out of the little hood of the towel there. So, yay. Yeah, all right. Must have just been stunned. A happy ending. We love happy endings. Excellent. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, that was probably a lot of different stuff. Uh, I'm feeling perkier now. Coffee helps. <laughs> maybe I, maybe it was just uh, still sleepy. So anyway, um, I'm going to see about getting some work done. Uh, I hope you all have a fabulous Thursday. If you have 
interesting, it doesn't have to be interesting. If you have data on like what, how you think this works with like getting back into producing and refractory periods and so forth, I'm, I'm interested. Send it my way. Uh, yeah. So yeah, have a happy Thursday and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.